Peace and love you, fantastic wonders of a spiritual level of being. Nathan here from a spiritual level of being, and yes, you have a spiritual level of being. And today I want to discuss the meaning of the Greek Gospel of Mary that I translated using a translator, and why I chose to use certain words. So let's get into the beginning of this text. He said these things, and they were not sorry, weeping much and saying that we are going to the nations, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of the Son of Man, for they did not pretend that they were destroying us. Now, they were not sorry. So this means they're not sorry that they're leaving behind an old life in order to begin a new life to spread the teachings of Jesus throughout the nations, throughout city to city to country to country. Now, the ones who aren't pretending that they're destroying them, so it means they're straight up honest about persecuting the Christians. This is the Romans. This is also other Jewish people viewing them as outcasts, as those being led astray by a false prophet. Now, they're not viewing them as Jews anymore. Now, the Romans viewing them as troublesome Jews or a new religion. So, the Romans themselves were very wary on the Christians, as a lot of them were anti-political. So, where it says here, nations, this could also be race or a group of ethnic people. So I chose to use nations. Now they chose to use world. Now in the Greek word, world can also be, which is cosmos, can mean cosmos, the universe. It can also mean the whole world. Now, when you use the word the whole world in Greek, this would also mean habitation or a dwelling place. So I chose to use nations. Now where it says here, the kingdom of the son of man, this can also be the kingdom of the son of humanity or the kingdom of the son of God, I chose to use son of man because it can also mean son of man as Jesus called himself son of man. And he said that we are all from the living father and that he came from the living father, that we are all the sons of the living father. Okay, so that was Mary comforts the other disciples. Let's go on to Peter asked Mary to teach. Then Mary rose up embracing them and said, do not tear and be sad. Do not hesitate. First give thanks for he is with us. We give thanks to his greatness because he supported us and united us. In many places, we changed their minds to the good and they came together. Now, we give thanks for he is with us, meaning that Christ is within all of us, that we are all the sons and daughters of God, that the inner goodness is within us, that we too can be Christ-like and bring people together. So this is giving thanks to the greatness that was Christ, that he was able to bring people together. So shifting their mindsets, changing it to the good. So once people were focusing on destructive things, being negative and hateful, now he's changed their mindsets to the good, to follow the path of unconditional love, to build a connection with God, a connection with the spirit within. Now, where it says here, Mary rose up and embracing them, this can also be having a hug, giving the disciples a hug each, cuddling them. Now, another Greek text says, kissing them as this was a Greek custom to go around kissing someone on the cheek when greeting them. Now, however, this wasn't so much a Jewish custom, especially with women and men. So I chose to use the word embracing. Now, as I only mentioned that Jesus kissed Mary Magdalene, so I chose to use the word embracing, which can also be a hug, a cuddle. This can also be a sweet word. Okay, so another reason why I chose to use embracing was because the other disciples were jealous, shocked, and even offended that Jesus was kissing Mary, meaning that she might have been a Canaanite descending or not Hebrew, so half Hebrew even, as this would have been viewed as taken on an outsider. Now, it was customary for a Jewish rabbi to be married by a certain age, especially during the time of Jesus. So it's more than likely they were married, especially if Jesus was kissing Mary. Now, it was customary greetings for Greeks to kiss one on the cheek. However, for a male to be seen kissed by a female, especially multiple different males, by one female, this would have been offensive, especially by Jewish customs and punishable even by death. So it's more than likely that the translator was Greek and put down a Greek customary tradition. So let's continue. Okay, so zeal about the quotes of salvation, says Peter to Miriam, which can also be Miriamne or Mary. Sister, we see that he loves a lot under him, but he loved you like no other woman. They say that we know the words of the Saviour, but we know that it is you. Please, Miriam, say what you remember. So this means that the other disciples don't understand the meanings of the teachings of Jesus in the way that Mary does. So Peter here being zeal, meaning with great enthusiasm or even with passion, hoping to get an answer that is 
zealous, meaning politically motivated or religiously and religiously and politically motivated. So here he's seeking answers in a way that he doesn't understand or hoping to get an answer that he wants. So let's go continue. When he says that he loved a lot under him, meaning that Jesus loved all that followed him, but he held Mary in a special regard, loving her more than all the other women followers. So meaning that he was seen kissing only her as well. So this meaning that Jesus was more than likely married to Mary Magdalene. Okay, so next bit. Mary discusses her vision. The Lord came to me once in a vision. I said, Lord, today I saw you. The rest of that chapter is missing. Now, we're going to go on to the next papyrus, the next Greek translation that I used, as the Greek gospel is used by two Greek papyruses. Now, other texts have the Coptic add-ins and reconstructions. I, however, will not use this. Okay, so Mary describes the ascent of the soul. The rest of the road and the age of time rest in silence. These things I said, Miriam, then she was silent. For the Saviour had spoken up to this point, meaning that she's stopped speaking now because this is all that she heard from Jesus. The disciples dispute Mary's teaching. Andreas the Forlorn said, Look, what do you think about the things said? To me it seems strange, for I do not believe the Saviour said these things. For you try to know his mind. Peter says about this matter, after examining them, about this matter, has the Saviour secretly speaks to this woman, and not openly, so that we may hear? Is she more worthy than us? The rest of the text is missing. I did not use the Coptic add-ins or the reconstructions. Now, Andreas the Forlorn. So this meaning Andreas is feeling lonely or feeling unlikely that his group will succeed in sharing the teachings of Jesus. This also means pitifully sad. Now, he says he doesn't believe these things because it's coming from a woman, as it was a male-dominated society. Now, he's saying that she's attempting to know his mind, as they view him as so godly that this is taboo, as they don't want to be like God, as they fear this. This is why Jesus says that you don't understand the teachings of what I'm saying, and you only do what you do so that way your God will be praised. This is in the Gospel of Judas. So, in the Gospel of John, Jesus calls their God, the God of the Pharisees and Sadducees, the devil. This is Yahweh. He's referring to a liar, a murderer, someone demanding sacrifice. This is why Jesus is openly challenging this religious hierarchy. So viewing them as leading the people astray, not letting everyone in the temple, only certain ethnic groups. So this is why Jesus is saying, bring the children to the temple as we're all the children of God. So when Peter says about this matter when he examines it and says about this woman being spoken to privately by Jesus. Well, Jesus also spoke to the disciples privately. However, they were asking him why he was speaking in parables as they had trouble understanding him. So it wouldn't matter if Jesus was married to Mary or not, or even if she was a Canaanite. As being a woman, she would have been viewed lesser than them. And being an outsider, if she was a Canaanite, would have been regarded as, again, less than them, as they're viewing themselves as Jesus' male students, so they should be more worthy than her. So this is why the jealousy and the attempt to know his mind would have been viewed as taboo, as it was attempting to know the mind of God. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to quickly show you the translation here, which you can download as well. Feel free to use it. I will eventually go correct something as I forgot to highlight one of the titles. So next couple of days I will get to that. So for now, here's the copy of what it looks like. So I have this on PDF and here's the Greek translations. So it's available for all of you. Thank you so much for joining me on this discussion. Connect to one mind and soul. Have a lovely day, a lovely night. Namaste.